When a mysterious murder takes place behind bars, this will be a job for a new Avengers team unlike any you've ever seen before. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the page of Avengers Inc. issue number one, the kickoff to a brand new series courtesy of fan favorite Al Ewing. So then, as we join the book, we head off to the Raft, New York's premier supervillain prison. It's here we're reintroduced to Whirlwind, longtime Avengers foe, evil mutant, and general D-list loser villain. Whirlwind is said to have a really bad night as a mysterious voice can be heard calling out justice is served before seemingly shooting him to death in his cell. Obviously, this is a big damn deal for a couple reasons, as no one should be able to enter or exit the raft without being seen, let alone kill an inmate, but it gets even crazier from there, as Whirlwind was only one of five other villains all killed the exact same way with a point-blank shot to the head. Founding Avengers member Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, is called in to investigate the problem, if only because Whirlwind was one of her own personal villains, which Janet says is a nice superhero-y way of saying that this dude stalked her and tried to kill her and her family for years, meaning that now she feels weird and kind of responsible to solve his and the other murders. It actually gets a little deeper than that too as we step back in time and see that Janet only heard about the Raft murders from Mayor Luke Cage. It seems that these days Janet is keeping herself busy by running the Jarvis Lounge, a fun little bar for superheroes inside Avengers Tower. Of course, none of the Jed McKay aligned Avengers seem to actually be visiting much for some reason. Now, in his role as mayor, Luke reminds us that being a costumed hero is still technically outlawed within New York City following the laws passed by the last mayor, Wilson Fisk, and that public superhero relations are at an all time low following Orches getting all sorts of buddy buddy with the American government. A hey, big props for connective tissue to other stories. Essentially, the good guys could really use a win right now, and for Luke, that would mean Janet solving these mysterious murders, and quick too. The only catch is she can't do any of it while in costume. Luckily, Janet is a lifelong professional fashionista, and has a whole wardrobe picked out for just this sort of occasion. Janet goes to the prison and shrinks down to check out the villain's wounds, and already things aren't adding up. If these were indeed gunshots, then they don't look like any gunshot Janet has ever seen before. Also, the words justice are served, Sure does sound like a reference to Scourge of the Underworld, a famous murderous vigilante known for targeting supervillains in the past, but beyond that, none of this matches his personal M.O. You might also be thinking to yourself, okay, yeah, a bullet could sure kill Whirlwind, he's basically just human without his costume, but how could it kill someone like Quicksand or Ice Master? Their biologies are totally different. Well, the short answer is, yes, you're right, because one by one, the dead inmates all start waking up and walking around. Understandably, they're all pretty pretty confused and pretty pissed off right now. Janet wonders if maybe this was some sort of elaborate breakout attempt, but judging by how unprepared all the inmates are, they sure had no idea what the hell was going on, and if the plan wasn't to kill them, then what exactly was the plan? Janet fights valiantly, but the numbers are most definitely not on her side right now. That is, of course, until Whirlwind ends up getting up to his feet, only he's not acting like Whirlwind would. In fact, he starts showcasing powers that the old David Cannon never had. Basically, he can phase shift now, reaching into one of the bad guy's chests to give his hard old squeezy squeezy before turning his fists ultra hard to one punch another. Now don't get it twisted, these phase shift powers aren't all encompassing, he can't do it to every part of his body as we learn once he ends up getting put in a chokehold by Anaconda, but still though, still though for what it's worth he managed to buy Janet just enough time for the rest of the raft security to come on in and put down the riot. When the guards do cart Whirlwind away though, he he says that his name isn't David Cannon and that he's not a prisoner, he claims to be Victor Shade, as in the old alter ego once used by the Vision. A name that Janet herself is able to pick out quite easily. Obviously, this mystery goes much deeper than just these murders, and because Whirlwind's body was legally dead just a few minutes ago, the Wasp decides to pressure the Warden to give Vic Shade a work release so that they can properly get to the bottom of what the hell is going on. And while it might not look like it at first, Janet and Vic have the makings of their own little super team going right now. If you got a super crime, if you can't solve it, who are you gonna call? Well, Avengers Inc., of course, that's who. But hey, we aren't done yet because as the comic comes to a close, we as the reader actually do get a chance to see who was behind the raft attacks, and the answer is gonna surprise ya. As we go underground, we meet Black Ant, aka the irredeemable Ant-Man, aka Eric O'Grady, who used his shrinking powers to sneak into the prison and kill the prisoners, but O'Grady is a mercenary, 
not a mastermind. Who put him up to it? Well, a mad scientist claiming to be Hank Pym, a.k.a. the original Ant-Man, a.k.a. Janet Van Dyne's ex-husband. But wait a minute, how can Hank Pym be right here right now? Last time we saw him, he was fused with his evil robotic creation, Ultron. Well, I guess if we want answers, we too will have to come back next time, am I right? And so that was Avengers Inc. issue number one, everybody, and oh man, this one absolutely blew away all my expectations. Marvel has really been missing a more hard-bitten, neo-noir, detective-style book, and this one fits the mold in every way possible. Also, I'm a big fan of Janet and the whole extended Ant-Man family, and I kind of love that this Avengers quote-unquote book is really just a stealthy Wasp series. I could not be more in the sky is really the limit for this one, and here's hoping it finds its audience, because this one really has cult series written all over, and I would give this one a much-deserved 8.5 out of 10, and I can't wait to read issue number two. Hey there, everyone, it's your pal Kate Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes content concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all and I will see you again next time. Bye bye.